back again and this time with the mid-year freak out book tag i've been seeing this all over youtube it looks like it's really fun and so i decided that i had to do it so the first prompt oh and the cre original creators were i'm not sure how to pronounce her youtube name it's cammy or chammy chammy maybe c-h-a-m-i i don't know but i'll have her linked uh in my description and then the it was co-created with um ellie i'm assuming E-L-Y. I'll also have her channel linked down in my description. And if I mention anybody else on this, um, any other booktubers, I'll have them linked as well. And I will link all the books that I talk about in my description. Okay, so the first prompt is the best book you've read so far in 2020. This, this one gave me a little bit of trouble. So technically, the best book I've read this year was Dune by Frank Herbert. I love Dune. It's one of my very favorite books ever. The first time I read it was in elementary school. My dad had a copy of this. He was super into sci-fi and fantasy, and so I read his books. <laughs> and Dune was one of the first books of his that I read. Um, so yeah, so technically this is the best book I've read, but I didn't want to use um, a reread as the, my best book. I just, but I did want to mention it since I did read it again this year. So I had to dig through and I couldn't decide between these two books. So the first one is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch, which is science fiction and it is very, very fast paced and it is very, very intense and it is fantastic. I absolutely loved this. Um, it was extremely good. And then this one is a horror novel called The Last Days of Jack Sparks by Jason Arnop. This book was wonderful. I loved the clever writing. I loved the character Jack Sparks. Well, I loved to hate the character of Jack Sparks. And I loved everything that happened in this story. And I love how well we get to know Jack, Sp Jack Sparks. Uh, the character work in Jack Sparks was wonderful. I absolutely loved it. So this book really really was a marvelous experience. So I couldn't decide which of those two books I liked best. So I thought we're just going to talk about them both because I do what I want. Okay, the next prompt is, um, let's see, the best sequel you've read so far in 2020. Well, I haven't really read any series this year, um, but I did do a reread of The Lord of the Rings. So I'm stuck doing my favorite sequel from Lord of the Rings, which is The Two Towers. Um, and I have two copies here. I'll show you this first one is the one I read originally when I was in elementary school. It belongs to my dad. I stole all his Lord of the Rings books. They're mine now. He can't have them back. Uh, so this was his copy, The Two Towers. It was my, that's my favorite one of the bunch. Well, no, it's not my favorite one of the bunch. The Hobbit actually is my favorite one of the bunch, but of the trilogy, this one, The Two Towers, is my favorite one. It's the most exciting and has the most interesting um, story. So, um, yeah, Two Towers, and you can see this thing is in very bad shape. I can't read this anymore. If I try to read this again, it's going to fall apart. So I bought myself another another set, and it's like a little tiny uh, flexible cover set, which, which I really, really like, and I love the pages and everything. It's just really nice book to read, a, a nice addition to read, I mean. Okay, so best sequel. Let's see, the next one is um, n a new release you haven't read yet, but you want to. Well, that would be Becoming Wild by Carl Safina. I saw this on Steve Donahue, and I've been dying to read it ever since I saw it on his channel. And I was on Book Outlet um, a couple weeks ago, and they and this was just released in April, and they had a copy of this. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. And they didn't even mark it. There's no mark on it. See, they usually put a dot on all their books. There's no dot. So I'm absolutely thrilled that I got a hardcover edition of this book and I'm very excited to read it and I do plan to read this within the next month. Oh, I forgot to tell you what it's about. I'll just read you the tagline because it tells you everything you need to know. How animal cultures raise families, create beauty, and achieve peace. So, yeah, I'm very, very interested in that. Okay, the next one is most anticipated release for the second half of the year. That would be the Apocalypse Strain, which I'll put here. I do not have a physical copy of it, but I did request it on NetGalley and they sent it to me and I'm very excited to read it. I was gonna read it in May because its original release was for June. Unfortunately, because of COVID and everything, they pushed the release date back to August. So I'm gonna wait to read it um, closer to its release date and then I'll do a review of it because I'm really, really excited to read that. It's tagline is marvelous. It's a horror novel. It's tagline is, the virus have a mind the virus has a mind of its own and it wants out. <laughs> I love that tagline. 
Okay, so the next one is my biz biggest disappointment for the year. That was very easy for me to pick out. That was Jaws by Peter Benchley. Oh, I went into this. Okay, Jaws is like one of my very favorite movies. I absolutely love Jaws. So when I ran into the book online somewhere, I think I saw it on somebody's channel. It might have been it might have been Steve Donahue actually. Now that I'm thinking about that. Um, but yeah, when I when I saw the book, I was like, oh yeah, I've never read the book. I forgot it was based on a book. I want to read the book, so I ordered the book. And I went into this book expecting the literary equipment, uh, the literary equipment, <laughs> the literary equivalent of the movie. Mm, not even close. It's terrible. I hated it. And I did a scathing review of it, which I will link up here somewhere if you are interested. And I will tell you that I did get some hateful comments <laughs> because of my review. So, you know. Um, let's see. The next prompt is the biggest surprise. Okay. That was also easy to pick out. Girl of Nightmares by Kendare Blake and its sequel. Oh no, I'm sorry. I'd got that backwards. Shame on me. Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendare Blake and its sequel, Girl of Nightmares. Oh, this is YA and I do not, I do not like YA normally, but um, at the end of last year and early this year, I was doing some um, exploring of YA because it's such a popular genre. I thought, well, maybe there is some that I will like. So I bought several um, YA novels to try. And this one I loved, absolutely loved Anna Dressed in Blood. It was so good. I couldn't believe how much I liked it. It's a haunted house story. I loved it. And then it has a sequel. The sequel wasn't quite as good as the first one, but it was also very good. I really liked it too. So I was very, very pleased with these. And I was shocked how much I liked these books. <laughs> really shocked. They were so good. Let's see. Um, a new favorite author, a debut or a new to you. Okay, so um, that was easy. I read a lot of new authors this year because I've been exploring horror and so I've read quite a few horror novels and I have not read much in the horror genre uh, over my life. So there are three authors possible for this position. Blake Crouch, Jason Arnop, who wrote The Last Days of Jack Sparks, and Grady Hendrix, who wrote The Southern Book Club's Guide to, Guide to Slaying Vampires and a few others. Um, also My Best Friend's Exorcism, which I forgot to grab that. I just got done finished reading that one. Uh, um, but I couldn't decide between those three, and I'll tell you why. Because they're all three new to me this year, but I've read two of Blake Crouch's, so, you know, I, I might need to say that he's my favorite day, uh, new author, but I really, really, really liked um, The Southern Book Club's uh, and, and the extra, the, My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I thought his writing was so good, and his stories are really good, too. And... Jason Arnop and I've only read one of his now so I don't know I just couldn't decide I I really really like the last days of Jack Sparks it was so good and if his other books are that good well then it would be really hard for me to decide decide between the three of them I don't know it's all so confusing okay so one of those three are the best new authors for this year let's see um mm -mm -mm, who okay Newest fictional crush. I have no fictional crush. I, the, I've had one fictional crush my entire life, and he is still my one and only fictional cr uh, crush, and that is Colonel Brandon from Sense and Sensibility. He's the dark brooding type, and that is my kind of man. Okay, and then let's see. Um, a new favorite character. Okay, I don't know that I had like um, a real favorite character. I really liked Jack Sparks from The Last Days um, of Jack Sparks. But I also really liked Patricia from The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I really, really connected with Patricia's character. Um, however, her character, um, the character didn't fall apart towards the end, but something happened in the book that I found very disappointing. And it made me stop believing in Patricia for the last one third of the book or so. However, even having said that, I still think she is a wonderful character and I still love Patricia. She's still in my heart. Okay, a book that made you cry. Okay, that would be D The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. I really enjoyed this book. It was really good. But in early on in the book, she's 
talk Hal is the main is the character's name and Hal is Hal is talking about how broke she is and about how alone she is and um she just feels really helpless and she just doesn't have control of anything and it's really really depressing and the way the author describes this was absolutely heartbreaking it just broke my heart it made me cry I had to put the book down for a minute it was just so sad <laughs> and then let's see um book that made you happy okay that was really easy well there were several books that made me happy but what made me the happiest was this captain raptor series the best one of the bunch being captain raptor and the perilous planet or yeah I'm sorry captain raptor and the perilous planet this is a um like a graphic story for children i absolutely loved this it was so so much fun and i completely recommend that you buy this for your kids and read it to them because it was so much fun i'm an adult i have no small children my son's 27 and i absolutely loved it i thought it was marvelous it just made me happy for the whole rest of the day okay um oh i forgot to tell you the author on that one okay um it's by kevin o'malley and patrick o'brien those are the the creators of that series all right the most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received well i didn't really buy a lot of beautiful books this year i have dune which is very very pretty i love this dust jacket and it has the sprayed edges oh they look blue on here these are actually like a turquoise color i don't know why they look blue on there they're a turquoise color um but yeah i think this is just so pretty the dust jacket but oh and then i really like the little end pages you see real pretty the back too and it's got like the little I can't know I don't know if you can see that can you see that on there the little okay and then it has fear is the mind killer also on the cover I don't know if you can see that right there there's the side but I don't like this book without the just jacket the dust jacket was really pretty, but even the sprayed edges don't match the book without the dust jacket. So I don't really like it. And I like the dust jacket essentially on this, on this book. Oh yeah. I forgot the, the dust jacket. I forgot the really most awesome part in this. Look at this. You see this? Pretty, right? So dust jacket is wonderful. It's beautiful. Absolutely loved it. And you know what I realized? I forgot to put, I forgot to plug in my mic and use it. God, sorry about that. I'll, I'll do it in the next video. <laughs> I won't forget. How, so anyways, but since I didn't like that book without the dust jacket, I would have to say this is the prettiest book because there's no dust jacket and it's just beautiful, beautiful without the, uh, I love the gold, the reflective gold. I love the floral. I love all of that. I love that it has maps on the end covers. Really, really like that. So nice. I think this book is beautiful just beautiful so this has to be the prettiest one because it doesn't have the dust jacket dune i like just the dust jacket essentially <laughs> um let's see mm -mm -mm. what books do you need to read by the end of the year okay that would be this big old chunky book right here and Frank the Collected Works. In Diary of a Young Girl, I read that the first time when I was in elementary school and it just blew my little, you know, nine-year-old mind wide open, or maybe I was 10, I don't know, nine or 10 years old, blew my mind wide open. But I found out that um, her dad, who is the one that published her diary, uh, he edited out a whole bunch of stuff from her diary that he didn't think would be appropriate to include. So what this book has done is it has put all those things back in and I don't know this for sure, but I've, I've been, I had, I flipped through it without actually reading it a couple times. And there are pictures in here and there are like copies of handwritten letters and things in it. So I think it's got a lot of extra material. So I don't know. I'm going to go through this and see what all's in here, but I'm very, very excited to read this. And I want to read this book very, very soon. I might start it this month. I haven't decided yet, but I am going to have to sit set aside a significant chunk of reading time for it because I don't want to just read through it like I do normal books. I want to take my time. I want to read it slowly. I want to take lots of detailed notes over it. So yeah, this is definitely one that I, I have got to, that I really, really want to read this year. I'm going to be disappointed if I don't read it this year. 
Okay, and finally, favorite book community member. Well, you know, I hate picking favorites because, I mean, I have favorites, but you know, I like all of the booktubers that I watch. I, I like them all for very specific reasons. So I, I hate doing that. Um, so anybody who, that you see, on, well, most of the people you see on my subscription list are people that I watch and that I really, really genuinely enjoy. However, there are two that I am going to mention specifically because I get so much from their channels. The first one is Steve Donahue. Uh, I would have to say he is my, my favorite because he has such a wide, he covers such a wide variety of books and I just learn so much from watching his channel and I get all kinds of book ideas. It's just crazy. I mean, he puts out three or four videos a day and they're always interesting. Never puts out a boring video ever. And then my other favorite booktuber would be uh, the rambling uh, raconteur. I really like him because I enjoy his like camera presence. Like he's seems like this really nice guy who might possibly a little be a little bit shy, but he has a lot to say about books and you can tell he's very passionate about books and he talks about a lot of interesting books. So when I watch his channel, he's another one that I watch and then I learn some things and I find out about books I didn't, I wasn't even aware of. So those two would have to be like the two channels that I get the most out of. Although everybody that I watch is very good and I enjoy them all. So, okay. Anyway, that's the book tag and that's all.